The Mystery of the Cannibal Aztecs It is widely known that the Aztecs partook in human sacrifice, but did you know that the Aztecs were enthusiastic cannibals, often eating those who'd just been sacrificed? The question is, why? There is universal agreement that Aztecs practiced human sacrifice and cannibalism, but there is no consensus as to its extent. So, what do the historians believe? Anthropologist Marvin Harris, author of Cannibals and Kings, has suggested that the flesh of the victims was treated as a reward as part of an aristocratic diet, since the Aztec diet was lacking in proteins. According to Harris, the Aztec economy would not support feeding slaves or prisoners and that they were to be considered walking meat. Bernard R. Ortiz de Montalano believes that Aztec cannibalism coincided with times of harvest and should be thought of as more of a thanksgiving offering. Montalano rejects the theories of Harris saying that with evidence of so many tributes and intensive Chinampa agriculture, the Aztecs did not need any other food sources. As already mentioned, the majority of those eaten were slaves captured in either battle or from conquered cities. Most of these seem to have been men. Sometimes the most valorous warrior slaves of noble heritage were chosen because of their great fortitude and skill, thus making them more of a delicacy and only used for special occasions. Spanish historians wrote that after the sacrifice was offered to the deity, it was common to first remove the heart, then the head and, sometimes, flay the offering. Once this was done, old men called the Quaquaquilton put poles through the body and carried it back to its owner waiting in the neighborhood's Calpulli house or some other ritual meeting place. The owner could be someone who had bought a slave in the marketplace or the warrior who had captured his offering in battle. Usually, the ritual meal was held in a meeting house. The 16th-century friar, Bernardino de Sahagan, tells us that, in the case of a warrior, the captor's family could partake of the captive, but not the captor himself. He was to be considered the captive's symbolic father, and it was not proper for him to eat his own son. Another 16th-century friar, Diego Duran also tell us that only the nobility had the right to offer humans for sacrificial feasting, commoners offered simpler things like bird, eggs, or venison. It was considered an honored obligation to provide a human for sacrifice and so it was reserved for the noble class. As Duran reports, the gods considered the flesh of a human to be sweet and pleasant and they were cooked according to varied recipes. The most common method was to cook corn in one pot, the meat in another and, when done, serve up bowls of stewed corn topped with small pieces of cooked human flesh. These dishes would be seasoned with aromatics and include beans, chilies, or squash blossoms. So why did the Aztecs practice cannibalism? The answer varies from those who argue that cannibalism was merely a Spanish fabrication justifying conquest, making the Aztecs appear as violent and ungodly, to the claim that cannibalism served as a correction for a dietary deficiency of protein, as already mentioned, or the act provided an extreme form of political and social control. While the Spanish no doubt exaggerated the magnitude, frequency, and ferocity of Aztec sacrifice, for example, Diego Duran reveled in anything especially bloody, a large amount of historical evidence supports cannibalism as a long-term, widespread indigenous practice and an extremely bloody one at that. Here are some examples of the writings that expanded this bloody and horrible reputation. Hernan Cortes wrote in one of his letters that a Spaniard saw an Indian eat a piece of flesh taken from the body of a recently deceased warrior. Bernardino de Sahagan, the first Mesoamerican ethnographer, contains an illustration of an Aztec being cooked by an unknown tribe. This was reported as one of the dangers that Aztec traders faced. In his book Relation, Juan Bautista de Pomar states that after the sacrifice the body of the victim was given to the warrior responsible for the capture he would boil the body and cut it to pieces to be offered as gifts to important people in exchange for presents and slaves. Benol Diaz's The Conquest of New Spain contains multiple accounts of cannibalism among the people the Spanish encountered. About the city of Cholula, Diaz wrote of his shock at seeing young men in cages ready to be sacrificed and eaten. In the same work Diaz mentions that the Cholilan and Aztec warriors were so confident of victory against the conquistadors in an upcoming battle the following day, that, they wished to kill us and eat our flesh and had already prepared the pots with salt and peppers and tomatoes. About the Quetzalcoatl temple of Tenochtitlan Diaz wrote that inside there were large pots, where human flesh of sacrificed natives was boiled and cooked to feed the priests. 
Diaz wrote that some of the indigenous people he saw during his travels were eating human meat, just like we take cows from the butcher's shops, and they have in all towns thick wooden jailhouses, like cages, and in them they put many Indian men, women and boys to fatten, and being fattened they sacrificed and ate them. His testimony was corroborated by other historians of the time. In terms of their overall diet, evidence is lacking for showing that cannibalism was capable of correcting protein deficiency if one even existed as the Aztec diet was normally varied and included enough protein. The anthropologist Michael Hanna suggested that the Aztecs had resorted to large-scale, organized cannibalism to make up for a supposed protein deficiency in the diet. This idea gained limited support from some scholars, but has been shown to be based on unfounded assumptions about eating habits, agriculture and demographics, making it a highly unlikely scenario. The rituals associated with the cannibalism focused on far more than only political or social issues. Although a shortage of resources, political power, criminal punishment, and war could serve as reasons for expanding sacrificial activities in general, religious sustenance was often the main reason given for cannibalism. Therefore, the most likely explanation for the cannibalism come from those who also attempt to discover the underlying religious reasons for it. Cannibalism was in fact just a version of a more widely spread practice of sacrifice, both human and non-human. Some argue that all sacrifice based itself on a feeding exchange among the world's diverse living beings. In every ritual, someone fed someone to someone else. The meal usually consisted of no more than perhaps an animal, or a bit of blood from one's ear lobe. In some rituals, however, actual humans served as the meal. Humans were often equated with corn, as they ate corn to sustain their life, so too were they corn that sustained other lives. It was believed that the Aztec goddess Siwakotl fashioned people from corn-like dough made from blood the god Quetzalcoatl let from his member onto ground ancestral bones. This myth ends with the admonition that both gods and humans were born because they gave of themselves. In another myth about how Quetzalcoatl gathered corn from a mountain, it was said that, in that mountain, the gods chewed up corn and placed it on our lips, making us grow strong. Sacrifice honored and fed the gods so that they might feed humans in return. So, without sacrificial nourishment the universe would end. To create a bond with the gods you had to share a meal. It said that we are all in this together. We feed you and you feed us and, sometimes, we eat the same food because we all live in the same world. We at Dark Histories believe that whilst there was a degree of the religious involved, the act of cannibalism took place because it simply wasn't taboo in the Aztec culture. The eating of human meat would become no different to the eating of special cut of meat for a Sunday lunch with family. We also see similarities to hunters who insist on honoring the sacrifice of their prey by consuming every aspect of it, the Aztecs were regularly sacrificing humans and so at some point probably just thought, let's honor them by consuming them and by all accounts the victim of Aztec cannibalism was treated with a degree of honor post-death and kept for special circumstances. We do love how society insists on trying to explain actions that run contrary to their own set of norms. When farmed pigs were introduced to the Aztecs in 1520 by the Spanish, they were quick to admit that humans did in fact taste like pork, perhaps the Aztecs just liked the taste of pork.